Hello quilters! Welcome to my little sewing space. My name is Sherry and I am here today to kick off the vlog hop for Pamela Morgan's new book called Perfect Patchwork. And I gotta tell you I'm dying to make this this cover quilt. Um, but um, Pam and I became friends just a few years back, we met um, at an event in Chicago and just happened to be sitting next to each other at dinner and got to chatting and, you know, we have, um, you know, become friends and, you know, quilting friends are actually the best. So I appreciate her and when she was working on her book, she asked me if I would make one of the quilts in a second colorway for her, which of course I was happy to do. So um, the quilt that I made is called um, Chasing Dreams and it has some cats in it that are chasing yarn balls and so forth. So um, I couched my yarn to my project, which is I guess a way of appliquing um, a yarn or a ribbon or something along that line. So I did mine by hand because um, I love working with my hands, um, but you could also get this job done uh, using a couching foot for your machine. And, you know, depending on what type of yarn or uh, ribbon or whatever you end up using, you know, um, may dictate the method that you use. So Pam asked me if I would just share with you how I went about um, doing mine by hand. So I'm gonna share that with you today. Um, it's, you know, it, very easy. It's basically just, you know, the kind of getting things in order and the glue that I use um, is very helpful and, um, and then just stitching it down. So let me just show you how I went about making my uh, Chasing Dreams quilt. Um, okay, so I'm going to be sharing a little tutorial with you today and the project that I'm working on is called Chasing Dreams out of the Perfect Patchwork book by Pam Morgan. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you quickly what we're going to be working on. Um, this is the quilt here and there are two yarn balls on here that are couched down. Now, if you're not familiar with couching, it's just a, you know, a method to apply something to uh, the face of your project. And um, you know, the yarn isn't actually interwoven into the project, we're going to stitch it down. So um, we've got one here in the second row and then one in the bottom row, because this is a row quilt, you know, constructed row by row. So what you can see here is the top of my quilt and this quilt, just to point out, also has, you know, a, um, you know, a border that is a little bit scalloped and, um, you know, it really does add a nice touch to the quilt. I love it. Um, but something to keep in mind, if you make the quilt, you need to keep your little applique pieces, um, you know, far enough away from your edge. So that's not a problem when you get to it. Um, okay, so let me, um, whoops, get started. There's another picture of it. So this quilt is obviously in, in blues and yellows and greens. My quilt is purple, pink, and orange. Um, and I'm, my yarn is a little bit different, and I believe uh, the, the one photographed in the book that Pam made was um, couched by machine. Um, which is, you know, another option for you. So let me just scooch this down to this yarn row here so you can see. Um, so this is the row we're going to be talking about. And the yarn I used, um, you know, has different thicknesses throughout, which at first I thought it might be problematic, but it's actually, I actually really loved how it filled this in quite nicely. Um, so this row of my quilt, I just want to point out that it is, uh, the base of it is, you know, squares. So these are low volume fabrics. Um, and 
um, just a row of squares that I did sew together prior to, you know, appliquing my cat and the yarn ball. And you can see, I'm gonna just pull this off to the side. You can see that, um, you know, this just kind of swirls down to the edge of my quilt and then gets, um, you know, taken up right under the binding there. So I believe what I did was I just freehanded this piece of it. And, um, you know, of course there are instructions on how to go about placing the yarn here within the ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put this quilt to the side and, um, and uh, give, give you a quick tutorial on how I went about doing this by hand. Okay, so I'm gonna get started here. And I don't know if you can actually see, but I do have a circle right here traced and then um, just a little line on this side. So I'm just gonna give you a little demo on this piece here. Um, so what I did for mine, and I love handwork, so that is why I opted for this method but also, um, you know, this yarn would not have fed through um, a couching foot very well, given the, you know, the thickness in some spots. So I'm just going to try to untangle this as best I can and start somewhere here. And I already see, I don't want that thickness in my little loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and Put it off to the side a little bit. Now, I um, am a bit addicted to applique glue. This one is glue based it by Roxanne's, um, and I use it for so many things. So you know, it would replace pins um, if you know you were pinning this down somehow or trying to keep it in place for stitching. It just works wonders. It is water soluble. Um, you don't need a lot. It dries super fast. So this is my go-to for many things. And um, right now I'm just going to put a couple of, um, it's actually not coming out yet. Um, I'm gonna put a couple of dots. I'm afraid to squeeze it too much. And I might even have a little clog in it. So let me just grab a pin. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just dab tiny dots along my line here. And I'm just gonna put this in place. Now, I don't want you to be too concerned about, you know, um, using, um, well, you shouldn't use too much, but using glue in general, because it um, it will wash right out and won't really be a problem for you. All right. <clears throat> and I'm noticing this is becoming a, you know slightly untwisted. So before I stick it, I'm going to just give it a little twist. Now you can see this is already starting to dry. If I glued this in the wrong position, um, I could easily pull it back off of the glue and reposition it and re-glue it. So I believe um, we're going to start by going around you know, the edge of my circle here. So I'm going to add some glue. I'm just going to do half the circle. And, you know, another thing is we are going to be stitching. So we don't want to have so much glue that it's going to be problematic for our needle. Let's go. I don't know if you can see how much I'm putting on there, but it's very little. I mean, I could almost just do, you know, a few dots. I really just wanted enough, you know, stuck on there enough that I can work it, um, you know, stitching it down. Okay. 
Oopsie. I think I'm gonna need a little more here and just let that sit for a minute. Now, sometimes what I do when I'm working like this is I have my little, um, you know, six and a half inch square ruler or something that I can place on top of the sections that I've already done. And it helps um, to just, you know, hold it in place for a minute without me bumping it and, um, you know, until the glue dries. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, fill in this area. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here and there. Whoops. <laughs> it's a little tricky. And then I'm just going to rotate it back and forth and I'm going to fill in, you know, half of this yarn ball. And you can see, you know, some spots are thick and some are thin, and that's quite all right. Um, but you, you may be using something different and, you know, may go about it a little different. I like it, you know, rather, rather full. At least that's, that's how I did my original one. Okay, so we've got half of it done there. My cat actually got into this ball, so I keep finding hairs and stuff. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right across the center here. So I'm just gonna add a little more glue as I work here, and maybe a little in here. You know, this quilt in particular, um, the Chasing Dreams one, is really a good technique builder because it includes, um, you know, some applique, some wool applique, a few embroidery stitches, or you can really have fun with embroidery on it. So, you know, this, this one was right up my alley and I really enjoyed it a lot. So if you like similar projects and, um, I mean, the, the quilt itself is just adorable. But if you like, um, you know, projects like this um, that use a few de techniques and you like applique or you want to try wool applique, you know, I would totally recommend this project. Now, I'm not going to worry too, too much about exact placement on this. Um, because I can, you know, manipulate it a little bit while I'm sewing, so. Okay, and that looks, that looks pretty good. Um, and it'll look, you know, even better once I've got it stitched down. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this, I'm going to leave myself a tail. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off and get this other piece out of my way and let this sit and dry. I will probably tuck this under so I don't have a loose end. And I'm gonna let this just uh, settle in and dry. And then um, we can talk a little bit more about um, stitching it down. I've got my supplies ready and um, we'll go over that next. Okay, so I've changed my camera angle and I have begun um, stitching some of this down. And um, I just wanted to show you what I'm using. I am using uh, Pearl Cotton 8, which, you know, is just what I have and I thought it would be easier for you to see. And whenever I'm using pearl cotton, um, especially size eight uh, for big stitch quilting or anything really like embroidery, 
I like to use these clover um, chenille needles, which are size 24, and they seem to work quite well for me. And I also like this particular needle threader, which is uh, by Dritz, and I'll show you how that works. It, um, I mean, I don't know about you, but needle threaders never seem to work quite right for me. <laughs> and they seem a little flimsy or weak. So for this, you definitely will want a, um, a sturdier needle threader. So this one, you can actually hang your needle right on here and then drape the thread over this little hook. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pull that right through the eye. So <clears throat> if you need it, whoops, if you need a needle threader, this is really a great one to have in your toolbox. So I am just going to tie a knot at the end of my thread, but I want to tell you where I'm at. So I began at this end of my yarn and I have been couching this uh, section down by hand. I've come across and back and now I'm working my way this way which will bring me here and all the way around and then out to the edge and I just you know you could really start wherever or whichever end you want but for me I wanted to be able to show you on this section what I'm doing um, I just thought it'd be easier for you to see so I'm gonna go ahead and finish working on this and then I'm going to uh, just show you how I'm how I'm working it when I get to this section here. Okay, so I have my whole ball is done now. And um, like I had mentioned, I did mine, I'm, or I'm doing mine in this pearl cotton, which, um, you know, is working out quite nicely. It's um, thick enough and it does match, but I might have gone with a off-white in hindsight, but this is just a sample anyway. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue, and you could use really any uh, thread that you have. I would, I would recommend something that is stronger and not too, um, you know, delicate. So I'm going to, what I've been doing with this, because this yarn has a twist to it, and it actually has a very, um, you know, light uh, thread, that is wound around it. So I have been following that on this particular yarn. You may not have that option with what you're using, but um, you know you can still use the same method. And really, I'm just trying to go for a little bit of consistency um, and not worry about too much else. So I am really just uh, weaving this around. Um, you know, I have a, a thread here on my uh, yarn and I could just take this right over that thread, but I think I'm gonna try to sneak one more stitch. Actually, maybe I'll do that here because this is a little bit uh, more of a, um, uh, space so and I want it you know couch down pretty well and um, you know it is a little loose in this section and it's thicker so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to continue this um, you know stitch so you know bringing it over and at an angle trying to match what's already here with this other thread that is part of the yarn. And, you know, I can come back 
and even, you know, fluff up a section if I need to and even it out, play with it slightly if I want to. And, um, oh gosh, my cat is meowing outside. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, she must know I'm, I'm playing with yarn. Um, okay, so I'm going to just continue down here, working my way around this yarn. And, you know, I, I actually really like this yarn a lot. Um, for this project, but um, I also know that my quilt um, is likely going to, um, I might hang this one actually up in one of my spare bedrooms because it is just really adorable. Um, and I know it's not going to get a lot of uh, heavy use. If it were a quilt that I was going to be, you know, using as a quilt, um, or, you know, it was going to get handled a little more, I would probably choose um, a yarn that was maybe a little sturdier, or uh, perhaps, um, you know, maybe even something different. I might even look around at the at the yarn shop and see what other things they have that would hold up a little better in a quilt with washing and all that business. But, um, you know, my kids are grown and I don't have any grandchildren yet <laughs> who would adore this quilt, I'm sure. Um, so I know mine's not going to get a lot of use. It's going to be handled with a lot of care. So I am certainly keeping that in mind um, for, you know, my choices. All right, so I'm coming to the end here. And you can see in this section, there's going to be, you know, several little stitches. And I'm really hoping that I don't run out of um, pearl cotton because I'm, I'm getting right down to it here. Okay, so I am actually done with my um, couching and, you know, I might play with it a little bit and just make it a little more even, but that's basically all I did for my um, yarn ball. And I hope in some way it helped you. And, um, you know, if you look at this quilt, there are a lot of techniques I think I mentioned already it is really a great skill builder quilt. So I hope that you, um, you know, give it a go. And, um, you know, thanks for stopping by and enjoy the rest of the blog hop.